What's up, YouTube? Zero here, and welcome to the place where gamers, witches, wizards, and superheroes unite. Today, I'm going to show you the boss battle against Efreet Malum in Tales of Arise. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you the entire boss battle. Of course, I cut out the cutscenes just to make the video a little bit shorter. You can see it's a pretty long boss battle. It's going to be a little different from most boss battles in this game, though. And I'm going to show you all of it. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks throughout this video as to how I defeated Efreet. And hopefully, will help you defeat Efreet a little bit easier. Just a little bit. But before I get into it, I do want to say that if you do enjoy this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more Tales of Arise content. I do a bunch of other video game videos and mystery box unboxing videos. So feel free to check those out as well. Now, let's get into the boss battle against Efreet. And as you can see right off the bat, Efreet, he's just a spectator for the most part. Now, he will hit the ground in anger because he's a spectator the developers didn't give him an opportunity to do much so when he grounds when he hits the ground it's him showing his frustration now he does have a few moves however all you have to do is try to avoid them throughout this battle we saw the first one he ground pounds stay at the back of the map we saw him use laser eyes which is pretty cool using laser eyes but again something you can easily avoid just by staying in the back of the map a lot of his moves are going to be closer the arena is a circle it's going to be closer to efreet so stay in the back of the map and you're going to be easily avoiding most of his attacks now this boss battle is going to be three rounds and you're going to be facing different enemies throughout these three rounds you can see in round one you face two big rock guys that's what i'm calling them i forget the name of them they're big rock guys they have a few moves they do charge and they can be interrupted their charge can be interrupted by kisara something that y'all should know they swing their arm around they try to do a couple of ground pounds they do body slam like snorlax so you can dodge out of that if you've played pokemon at all you know what snorlax does he he's big he's slow he tries to jump on you so watch out for that now the entire battle in general all three rounds are going to be enemies that love fire they love it which means you're not gonna love fire so if you want to put alfin on the bench this may be one of the best battles to do so a lot of alfin's moves are going to be fire and these enemies are going to resist those fire type moves one of the reasons why I utilize Rinwell in this battle is because she has a lot of water type moves and these enemies are going to be weak to water type moves so I would recommend utilizing a character if you have Rinwell and she has a lot of water type moves like my Rinwell I would utilize Rinwell as your main character two reasons one just mentioned she's very good with water type attacks and two because she's a ranged character it allows you to stay towards the back of the map you can stay away from your enemies still do a lot of damage to your enemies and you don't have to worry as much about efreet's attacks if you're using a closer range character and those enemies get closer to efreet then you're gonna put yourself in the line of fire and you have to be more diligent as you are completing this battle when efreet is going for a ground pound when he's using his laser looks like a laser mouth and stuff laser eyes much cooler if it was laser eyes but anyway when he's using his laser using his ground pound some of the times the enemies get up close towards efreet you're gonna have to be more diligent as to when efreet is about to attack because you need to avoid it however if you are rinwell or a character that has ranged attacks rinwell dohalim alfin does have one long ranged attack demon fang well demon fang and double demon fang 
you can use Xion, she is more ranged attacks, but some character that has ranged attacks that you could stay in the back of the map. That's the reason why I utilize Rinwell, because she's very good at that. Now, when you first get into this battle, F3, it's going to say that he's at level 47. However, the enemies that you face are not going to be at level 47. You're not going to have to worry about facing those enemies at that insanely high level. My characters in this battle are around level 40. So that's where I recommend your characters being. The enemies that you're going to face are going to be between 38 and 43. Somewhere between there. So they're going to be closer to 40, which is why I recommend being around that 40 level. You can probably get through the battle. Not too bad. You'll have a couple of scars. You're going to have to use a couple of life bottles if you're, if you're getting hit a little bit. But it's not going to be too bad. Now, round two. We have a bunch of casters. So, of course, you got to utilize Rinwell in that part. Now, you can see in this... Second round, Efreet decided that he wants some fireballs going. Now, in this round, the fireballs are going to be anywhere. However, they are slow. You're going to be able to see the area of effect. You're going to be able to get out of dodge. So just pay attention to that. You see right now, my Rinwell is standing. That area of effect was right beneath me. Luckily, I had a combined attack so it didn't come down on me but it's just something you need to be aware of in round two that there's going to be some form of a fireball coming down on you very slow just make sure you get out of dodge it's very easy to dodge if you are paying attention just get out of that area now it has another attack that's probably going to target you as the main character he has that fireball and it's shooting out little fireballs so this round Efreet wants to get into the action a little bit more. First round, he was pretty mad. We stayed away from him. We were in the back of the map. He was getting mad. He was ground pounding. He was using his laser mouth, laser eyes, whatever he was using. It wasn't working for him. So he wants to get into the action more. He sees us as Rinwell, back of the map. He wants to start calling in fireballs. So one fireball comes down. The other fireball, he's going to summon it. It's going to shoot out little fireballs. You're going to have to dodge that, but it is relatively easy to dodge just pay a little bit more attention you're gonna see that area of effect now he still does ground pound and you can see there's an area of lava coming out beneath his hand if you stay towards the back of the map as Rinwell, you're gonna be able to avoid it we're still going it's a pretty long battle these enemies are pretty beefy but you should be able to continually do damage to them. And remember, utilize those water attacks. It's going to go a little bit quicker. Alfin and the rest of your crew are going to be dumb. And they're going to stand right underneath this dude's big ass hand and get hit. It just happens. That's why you have those life bottles, peach gels, etc. To kind of heal your AI characters when they decide that they just want to get crushed by a giant hand. Because every once in a while, who doesn't like getting crushed by a giant hand? Apparently, Alfin loves it because he decides to stand under him all of the time. Now, there's going to be a point in the battle when there are these big rock boulder guys along with these floating casters. Remember to utilize Rinwell to break the spells. That's going to make your life a lot easier so you don't have to dodge the spells as much. Because a lot of times, these enemies are going to be trying to target you. So it's just something to be aware of that when they are casting their spells, they're going to be most likely targeting you. So just be aware of that if you don't have an, a charm that stops the elemental effect, be aware of that. Now, he does call in as we're getting further and further into the battle, he calls in these tornadoes of fire. You saw it just took me out. It was pretty quick, but that's something else that you're going to have to look out for as the battle continues to progress are these tornadoes of fire they're going around they're spinning who doesn't like a tornado that has fire in it because of course why not he still ground pounds still something you gotta look out for but 
Rinwell, back of the map, you're gonna be okay from that. The main goal of this battle is going to be utilize water attacks and stay in the back of the map. You're gonna be able to see a lot of Efreet's attacks. A lot of them are going to be in the front portion of the map near him, so you're not gonna have to worry about him. The ones you are gonna have to worry about are his longer range attacks. So again, just make sure you're seeing that area of effect and getting out of dodge. You can see a couple of fireballs are popping up from a spell that was cast. You just gotta watch out for it. When it comes up, just start dodging. Dodge away, dodge away. Just bob and weave. We know how to bob and weave. I've shown y'all in my videos before, just doing a little do -si do I've shown y'all. You know how to bob and weave. I believe in you. So we are down to what looks like this big boulder guy. We are almost at the end. We've almost taken him out. Soon, very soon, this dude is going to be taken out. So remember the rounds. We have two big boulder guys at the beginning. Then we have about four spell casters in round two. Then round three, we're going to have our spell casters along with our boulder guys. Make sure you're still bobbing and weaving, even though you're getting down to the end of the battle. Just watch out for a lot of the ranged attacks. If you're not paying attention, they can easily take you out. They do deal a lot of damage. The boulder guys, when they charge, can also deal a lot of damage, so try not to get in their way. Now, there is a move at the end of this battle that you're going to see. I wasn't expecting it. I'm not sure if you can dodge it, but it literally wipes my team out except for Alfin, who's left with one health. I don't know if Alfin's always going to be left with one health. Let me know in the comment section if you've experienced this, but it literally wipes my team out except for Alfin with one health. I didn't know if it was the end of the battle or not, so I end up using a life bottle. I'm not sure you actually have to do that, but Alfin's left with one health and then he's able to defeat the boss. There is a boost strike clickable moment that you can do. And it's right here. He wipes, he ground pounds and kills everyone except Alfin who has one health. Now, again, me not knowing at this point in time that it was the end of the battle, I use a life bottle. I don't think it's required, but at this point, a boost attack will come up and you can kill this final boss. I just start using life bottles because I'm afraid that this dude's about to wipe me out. I know it's at the end of the battle, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day and until next time, peace.